Before the big event of 2020, if you told me that I could make these kind of statues from my home, I would have told you that you're lying. This is Ground Affected, my name is your dad and if you don't believe me, just ask your mum. By the way, this model and uh, this video was sponsored by Z Studios and I will tell you more about them later on in the video, but for now, look at the size of this model and uh, let me just tell you the time frame that I had to make this model meant that I needed to use my heater to heat up uh, some open printers uh, just to make sure I had at least three of my machines working uh, during this time. Now ultimately, I do have four machines, but the one is under testing and uh, speaking of testing, I was doing a convention at the exact same time time as this all came about so basically rundown of the story on a Wednesday which is five days ago I was given a model to support and 3d print this is the size of the model it is massive it is so huge that genuinely I don't even know how I got to this point but basically Zez made this most amazing um, Hulk of the incredible type and it's so cool and I needed to make this model so in order to do this I needed to get my ass moving and what I did was I 3d printed everything in 0.05 millimeter layer height just to speed things up one thing that I do have to say about Zez is that their models do fit so well together uh, the owner of Zez whom I have speak to quite often is one of the best cutters in the industry even if I have to say that myself now even with the best cuts in the industry, a model of this size is not going to fit the average printer so unfortunately the base I had to print in 4 parts just to fit on my printers. And in order to fix these parts together, I'm going to use some super glue but before I do that, I score them first with a sharp knife. This is going to create a lot more area for the super glue to grab onto. The super glue I'm using is a uh, thick variety of super glue. This is because I want it to be more gel like and stick to the surface and not run all over the place uh, like super glue does tend to I use a CA activator to speed things up and also I use some resin to cover in some of the gaps after sanding as much as I possibly can and then I use a UV lamp just to cure that resin this UV lamp is attached to my Elegoo curing machine so you can just find any UV torch after I've got all the parts ready and it's time for me to start painting them, I'm going to prime them and in my case I use a Citadel Chaos Black Primer. At this point I also decided maybe I want to get some lights to go inside of this model. I did count all of them however there are 84 just in the arms alone and uh, I decided I was only going to light up certain parts of them but we will get to that later. For the base I need to make sure that everything is as fast as possible on this model so I'm not going to be messing about with mixing colors on this rock first. All I'm going to do is create some texture with some whites. I'm going to start out with a grey and then a little bit of a lighter grey which is not white but it's kind of white basically and I'm just going to dry brush everywhere. This is going to bring out all the texture on the base. And then we're going to just cover that with a multitude of different washes and tints essentially to just change the color of the rock because luckily for us it is a rock and rocks are not one color so this means that we don't really have any real rules to stick to other than rock colors which could be almost any color basically. For the rest of the base there is this little thing that it sits on which in the end came really helpful for me for hiding my batteries in but I just dry brush that with a metallic silvery kind of color. It doesn't really matter because later on I'm going to spray this anyway with a metal color too. There is a part which I'm assuming is where the gamma juices are flowing through and on that part I basically it just painted it silver. Once I was done painting it silver, I needed to give a little bit more shape to this and I sprayed some shadow colors which is a blue and a bit of black mixed into that just around the sides of the pipe and in a couple more areas on the rock just to create a bit more depth. You can see me building up some of the depth as I go along. I also painted the goop which I think is gamma. I don't know what this goop is. It genuinely, I'm a nerd but I'm not that much of a nerd. I literally, I just like to paint things. I know it's goop. It's nuclear of some kind. It is green. So I painted it white and then I sprayed uh, with the airbrush a bit of green to make it look like it's glowing kind of. And then I just reinforced that green over the top of the brush and I came back in with the airbrush to add some highlights onto it so that it looked like it had more shape to it. Otherwise it would look a little bit flat and maybe perhaps a 
little bit boring. I then also decided this was a good point to reinforce some of the really brighter edges on the rock. I then came back in with some of this uh, oil type wash which is I think an enamel, I don't even know what it is. It's a panel liner from Tamir and I literally just brushed that into a couple of areas around the piping and uh, in some of the shadowed areas. I then took some gloss varnish and painted this over my goop. A little tip here, if you paint this goop, make sure it is fully dry before you put the gloss varnish on because you will be sad when it pulls up some of your paint and uh, don't ask me how I know that, uh, but let's move on to painting the Hulk. Previously, I painted a Hulk and I'm pretty sure I used a purple base. I can't really remember. Honestly, days just seem to uh, mush into nights and I actually don't even know where I am anymore. But essentially, with this Hulk, I gave him a Zenithal highlight and I sprayed blue like a smurf into all of the shadows because shadows are blue, right? That's what all artists tell us. So I sprayed blue into the shadows. I then took a green ink and I spray this over everything. Now, this is probably the most wasteful way of doing it. However, it still came out pretty cool, uh, but if you are gonna do this, uh, buy at least two bottles of green ink because this model was massive. Um, while that green ink was drying, however, I spray painted those little capacitor things in uh, neon green in order for them to just have some kind of green to them when the lights are off. I then took a uh, green that to my eye has a bit more white in it. It's not mixed with yellow. It does have yellow. I'm not going to lie. It has a yellow in it, but it has more of a whitish yellow. So it tends towards the whiter side of greens uh, rather than the yellow side of greens, if that even helps in any way. And I basically just went all over the model and shaped up all the muscles as if this was the main color of Hulk, leaving a lot of the blue, a lot of that other green and all the blacks and whatever was left in between. I then took an even more more white to green and I sprayed that just into the highlight spots of the model uh, on the top part of the muscles uh, just to make them look more voluptuous. I then took a little bit of yellow uh, to increase the voluptuousness uh, just a tiny little bit more. Now you could stop at this point but I want to push that contrast really really hard so I'm going to take some blue and a little bit of Reichland flesh shade and I'm going to shade that into all the deepest darkest shadowed areas. I'm also going to paint some of the lines kind of in between the muscles a little bit just to shape them up a little bit more. And while that all dries, I'm going to do another dry brush layer over the rest of the arm pieces on this base. And then I'm going to spray it with the metallic silver like I said. Now, I was going to do all these LEDs as actual LEDs and then I realized I didn't have time. So I ended up just doing an OSL of some sort. And then I decided to start working on some of the wires that are in these arms that hold the capacitors and gamma and whatever. I don't know what they are, but I painted some wires on them. This is very deep into day two of the actual painting. On day one, all I did was most of the prep work and I painted uh, quite a bit of the rock and the base. But we are now quite far into day two and at this point it's time to start making a little bit more sense of the model and in this case I'm going to start painting a base coat over the pants on the Hulk. As you can tell I painted his skin tones because there is a couple of rips so I allowed the skin tones to go on to this part of the model knowing full and well that I would need to come back and either mask those out and spray it or just paint it by hand and I chose to go by hand because it was a lot easier this way. I mixed up a sort of bluish blackish kind of color and uh, realized that I was spraying that all over my table so I moved over to the airbrush booth and I sprayed this pretty much over the model. I've spoken before about colors when they go over certain colors it's not too noticeable in this particular case. It's not too noticeable if that color went over the green a little bit so it kind of works if you spray and get a bit of overspray it's not the absolute end of the world i did come back and add a little bit more highlights and a little bit more shadows whilst the model was together just to make sure that those shadows and highlights were in the right place however and i then took some brown and painted the lovely belt that goes around this massive man's waist this would be a good time for me to explain to you that this video was sponsored in fact by Z Studios. These are the models that they have made in the past 
as well as obviously the Hulk that you are seeing me paint in this video. If you are interested in uh, 3D printing anything like this or something similar, maybe you should check them out and there will be a link for them in my description. Please check out the sponsors of this uh, channel because without them, it probably wouldn't be any cool models or videos to continue making. Also, at this time, I would like to say a special thanks to my Patreon because 100% without them, there wouldn't even be a studio for which with I would make any of my videos from. Thank you everybody for sponsoring of the videos and uh, let's get back to the regularly scheduled uh, content. This is day three and on day three I decided that it was time to start working on the rest of the base. I had a clear game plan because by the end of this day I needed to have this model completely done otherwise I wouldn't have time to edit this video that you are currently watching. I masked out the little computer that is on the base and this is where I decided to start doing some LEDs. I do not know what I'm doing here. Do not ask me. I have to ask people online if they can help me with the answers for these things because I genuinely don't know and even when they do give me the answer I still do my own thing and uh, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work but in a nutshell basically what it is these uh, LEDs are three volts and there's two ways you can do this you can either use a little button cell battery which is three volts on its own or you can use two double A's or two triple A's together in a little casing and this will create it, uh, three volts if you wire them up in the correct manner I don't uh, parallel series words solder little bit of uh, heat shrink flux and uh, there you go all wired up thank you for coming hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, give it a little bit of OSL so that when it's off again it doesn't look boring uh, this kind of looks like it's on and doing its thing while it's sitting on the base without the lights on I then added a little bit of uh, panel line wash to make sure it looks a little bit aged and uh, used perhaps I don't know what these people do with these things uh, but I did that I then added a little bit of black around the rims because it was boring I think and when it was all done, I gave it a nice varnish of gloss and I wired the wires all the way down the side of the model and I decided to keep them on the top of the model. I could have run this straight through the center of the model in the base, but I felt like it added to the effects on the base of this model. It was time to go back to the other arm. There is a much bigger arm, as you can clearly see by this uh, image in front of your face. It's a much bigger arm that needs to have wires in it so that I can add these LEDs too. A little trick with LEDs, there is a long and a short arm on them. The long one is the red one or positive and the short one is the black one or negative. So maybe that helps you, I don't really know. But I'm gonna then wire all of these up by soldering in some long ass wires to them. This is, electronics people are probably looking at this thinking this guy is absolutely mental and I don't care. I don't care if you think that it's wrong, but this is how I did it and uh, it worked for me. Make sure to protect all your connections. I used heat shrink in this case because I don't want my Hulk to be um, the ghost rider at any point in his life. Once I've got all those wires in, as you can tell, I now have a harness of about 4 billion wires, which kind of looks pretty cool. I was going to run this through the base just like I was going to run the iPad uh, wires through the base but I felt like this is going to look really cool on the outside of the base so I kept it all out as one big thick thing and I decided to then work on the OSL that is around the rest of that arm and also on the base. Of course with the light coming off of these arms I could not ignore the fact that there would be light on the base so I made sure to set up a bit of a good white uh, base for the base freaking heck I said base so many times uh, but once I had done that I then sprayed uh, that nice green color from games workshop all over the things so that it looked like there was light upon the things I then glued on all of the capacitors which we had painted earlier onto their place on the arm and then I mixed up an oil wash so that I could uh, literally splash that into all the gaps on the insides where the cables were and around the little circular doodad things that are on the arm. And then I pumped the living daylights out of my thick super glue and I put that arm in its place. All the time I was doing this I was thinking about how I could run these cables. Uh, basically what I ended up doing was just drilling a massive hole in the side of the other arm and this arm on the one side and then running the wires through. I looped them amongst each other a little bit to kind of make it look like it was meant to be something. And then I pretty much tied them all together which basically meant all the lights were in parallel uh, situation. 
I then uh, soldered that so that it wouldn't come apart and I added two tiny little wires coming out of it and insulated those and stuffed it back up into the arm and then I soldered that onto this little battery box which I assume is running in series because it lit up everything and they were nice and bright and uh, I then soldered that little uh, button cell battery thing onto the other arms because you cannot mix red and you cannot mix the uh, green LEDs. Dude, it's so confusing. I literally don't understand why, uh, but I know that there is something to do with the difference in voltage. They don't work. I know this, so I had to have two separate battery sources in order to run the red ones and the green ones at the same time. Uh, at this point, I also realized that there was shirt uh, sticking out of the Hulk's uh, pants and I then painted that with a deck tan if there is anybody playing the deck tan game It is now time for you to take a drink after I was done with that I mixed a little bit of that deck tan into a bit of blue and black and I kind of highlighted a bit of the frayed edges on his uh, Short pants as well. I then gave the Hulk one of the best manicures one can ever have and gave him a lovely green nail polish across all of his toes and his fingers. I also at this point added a little bit of the brightest green that I used originally all over uh, some of the veins in order to make them stand out. And you can't have a fresh set of painted toes if without painting the nails as well on the hands. So I did that and then I also added a little bit of uh, wash into the crevasses uh, just to add a bit more depth there because they looked a little bit flat. It was then time to get onto the face of this dude and uh, I forgot to record painting the hair but I'm pretty sure you can imagine painting black onto the top of a head and uh, that's basically what I did. For the mouth, I decided to go with this guy just because of the time frame that I had. The open mouth version of this guy would have taken a little bit longer to paint and I really needed to make sure that things were done by the end of this day. So I went with the closed mouth version. I painted his mouth pink first, just the gums really. I kept quite a bit of green inside of his mouth. And then I went back with a wash of Magos Purple and then I highlighted the gums uh, before I went back in again with a uh, deck tan. Yes, you can drink again, good sir. And uh, I make sure when you are painting these teeth, you want to keep a little bit of a gap around. That's where the green stays in the background so that it kind of frames the teeth and makes them just look a little bit better from a distance. Up really close and personal, they look good, but maybe you could see the green and you might not like that. So you choose whatever you want to do, it's your model. I then painted the eyes with uh, deck tan, uh, please don't be drunk dude, but basically after I was done with that, Magos purple to make them look a little bit reddish and then deck tan again, sorry dude. And then I went back in with the irises and uh, used the dark green for this, as you can see, and placed them quite above the eye, right near the top of it, because he would be looking through the top, he's an angry man, this is a good place for you to place these irises, and that's where I placed them. I gave them a nice brighter green uh, to make them look nice and shiny, before I added the pupil and the lovely highlight onto that pupil. It was then time for me to plug in the battery, uh, and plug in the other battery, and stick them into the base. As you can tell, this is not the best way of doing things, but it works really well, for me at least, anyway. But this is pretty much where I decided that I was happy with this model, and it was time for me to call it done. I hope that this video inspired you to make your own models, 3D print something, paint it, or just to just have a bit of time on the toilet. And if it did, then that's fantastic, share it with your grand. But if it didn't, and you didn't actually like anything that you saw, then I don't actually care. And now it's time for you to kindly f off. Oh, and uh, don't forget to check out uh, Zez Patreon. Uh, there is a description link in the description. Go check it out now. Thank you, Zez, for sponsoring this video. Now you can f off.